Happy Emancipation Day, Jamaica. Yes, as is customary, when a national holiday falls on a Sunday, the day is celebrated the following Monday. Hence, today's celebration of the 187th anniversary of emancipation. Granted in August 1834, only children under age six were truly free. All other slaves were called apprentices, working a 40-hour work week without pay. Full freedom only took effect four years later in 1838. Despite the many hardships, we've come a long way from being enslaved to now charting our own destiny. Let's all take this time to reflect on how far we've come and make even greater efforts to realize our shared national goal of Jamaica being the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Our Emancipation Day program continues after this short break. It's a new is dawning it's time to arise we are the gene of achievement and pride bold new beginning time for action we have the spirit to fight on this is jamaica this is our land we have our future with god Make every effort to forge unity yeah, yeah, and resolve yeah. to work hard for our prosperity. Leaving our children a legacy of hope, breaking the shackles and smashing the old This is Jamaica. This is Jamaica. Jamaica. This is our land. This is our we have our future with God in our Together we can. We remain resilient in our fight against known and unknown threats to our country. We are never daunted. We are committed to continuously deliver effective and efficient service when we save lives and protect property. And we continue to reassure with courtesy, integrity and respect for the rights of all. We are building forward together. Give us vision, lest we perish. A pertinent line from our national anthem. The leaders we appoint to represent us must be able to execute our shared vision for Jamaica, land we love. Hear now from our head of government, the most honorable Andrew Holness. <laughs> One hundred and eighty-three years ago today, on August 1, 1838, the descendants of trafficked and enslaved Africans, who themselves grew up in generations of slavery, finally celebrated their full freedom as declared in the Emancipation Proclamation. There are many reasons to be considered as to why the British Parliament decided to end slavery as a means of economic and social organization of its colonies. The abolitionist movement and a growing consciousness of the inhumanity of slavery would have played a part. Eric Williams, in his celebrated thesis on capitalism and slavery, contended that sugar and how it was produced through the plantation system 
became increasingly unprofitable and costly to maintain. However, we must never overlook or underplay the role that our forebears played in resisting and rebelling against slavery. Though the system of chattel slavery was total in its control and dehumanization, it could not completely eliminate our dignity and the spirit of resistance to oppression. Our forebears were not passive and obsequious onlookers waiting for freedom to be handed to them. No, they actively rejected the idea of enslavement and fought it physically, often making the ultimate sacrifice, paying with their lives, as did Sam Sharp and many other nameless fighters. Today, we celebrate, as our forebears did, the day of full freedom. We give thanks for their sacrifice and we reflect on the dehumanizing system that sought to treat another human being as property, to deny them of any rights, even over their own body and reproductive decisions, and to control them by inflicting mental and physical pain through lashing and other forms of punishment which violated their physical and spiritual being. As we celebrate the freedom events of this day in the past, we must also reflect on the condition of our society now. The use of violence has followed us from our history. Presently, there is a belief widely held in our society that the physical being of another person is not inviolable. There is little acknowledgement of the entitlement to personal space. For many, uninvited touching and hitting is accepted as normal in our society. The correction to a child for hitting another is not to explain to the child that hitting is wrong. Oftentimes what we see is the offended child being encouraged to hit back. We see parents who believe children have no rights and must be lashed in order to be brought under control. And we see family members who believe that the only way to resolve disputes over ownership and property is by fighting, oftentimes to the death. And we see intimate partners viewing each other as property with rights to control, even by force. And we see it in the gang and don culture employing violence to control and subjugate entire communities. What would our forebears think of us? That we have become so comfortable with the use of violence on our own that the very tool of oppression that the slave drivers used on them, we are now using it on ourselves. They would be baffled and shocked because freedom for them would have meant freedom from violence or the threat of violence. It would have meant that they were no longer chattel, but rather that they own themselves and their labor, that they could not be taken at the whims of a slave master's fancy, that they couldn't be whipped for disobedience. Yet, in our free society, these kinds of violence happen every day. And we, the people who suffered this violence for centuries at the hands of oppressors, today inflict it on our own. And worst, defend their use as necessary to discipline our children, picnificate lick, spare the rod and spoil the child. Necessary as a show of love to our intimate partner, she believe him love her when beat her and necessary to bring order to households and community. Inviolate, so him for dead. Freedom and the use of violence is incompatible. There is no freedom where violence exists. I invite all Jamaicans to reflect on this. We must all make a concerted effort to reject violence in our daily lives. Your government is seized of this disease of violence plaguing our people. It is of epidemic proportions, and it has infected all facets of our society. The first step in combating this disease is to get the average person to accept that violence in all its forms, whether intimate partner, domestic, corporal punishment, gang violence, or security force violence, all violence is wrong. 
We have started to combat this disease through legislation with the sexual harassment law and the domestic violence bill, which is being reviewed. We're conducting a thorough study and review of the problem of violence in order to inform a comprehensive reform of government's policy framework and response. As your Prime Minister, I'm very concerned by the frequency and increasing brutality of acts of violence being reported. We have been spiraling along this path for some time without instrumental and direct government intervention. And I know that I am not alone in the observation that our society is becoming increasingly callous, brutal, and numb to violence. Nevertheless, I'm positive that we can transform our country into a kinder, gentler, and more caring society. At the heart of every Jamaican is a desire for justice, brotherhood, and peace. This emancipation, let us all reflect on our own lives and see how we have used any form of violence and how we can replace a harsh word with an endearment. A quarrel with reason and a clenched fist with an elbow bump. Let us all commit to protecting our freedom from violence and honor the struggles of our forebears by not inflicting on ourselves the violence the slave drivers inflicted on them. The chains are gone, but our mentality enslaves us. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. One love. Up next, the Emancipation Day message from Leader of the Opposition, Mark Golding. Greetings, Jamaica. This is our Emancipence Week, when we celebrate two significant milestones in our nation's history. Emancipation Day on August the 1st and Independence Day on August the 6th. For a short period after our independence, we stopped celebrating Emancipation Day as a separate holiday. Thankfully, in 1997, Prime Minister P.J. Patterson fittingly re-established Emancipation Day as an official national holiday. Emancipation Day marks the date when the bill for the abolition of slavery came into law 
and slavery was abolished in Jamaica and the rest of the British Empire. On that day, 311,000 Jamaicans celebrated freedom from the shackles of slavery. However, full freedom did not come until 1838, as in the intervening period, our people were indentured in so-called apprenticeship. Emancipation Day not only marks the occasion of the end of slavery in our country, it also celebrates the heroic resilience of our foreparents who retained their dignity and never lost their determination to be free and their courage in the unceasing struggle to win their full and unconditional human rights as full citizens of this country. It is a fact that no form of compensation was paid to those who were enslaved either for the unpaid extraction of their labor or their life in bondage that they endured. The profound negative effects of that period continue to be endured to this day and the growing calls for reparations remain unyielding but have not yet been answered. To Jamaicans everywhere, in Jamaica and the diaspora, happy Emancipation Day. Celebrate safely as we honor the heroic struggles and achievements of our four parents. One love Jamaica, God bless you all. men and women Equality. a message from the bureau of gender affairs and dispute resolution foundation paid for by the un women fund for gender equality covid 19 infection and hospitalization rates are on the rise we want you to continue practicing the safety protocols by wearing your mask sanitizing your hands and social distancing you may also want to try these foods, which can boost your immune system. The novel coronavirus 2019, or COVID-19, is a respiratory illness that may present with a fever, dry cough, and tiredness. Persons may experience more severe symptoms, such as shortness of breath and difficulty breathing. One of the best ways to fight this disease is by boosting your body's immune system. Giving yourself a healthy head start could be the difference between life and death. As we look at how we can stave off or reduce the effects of COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses like this disease, we have compiled a list of ways to optimize the functioning of our immune system. First things first get regular rest. Sleeping between six to eight hours helps improve the body's immune function, mental health, and regulate weight while increasing productivity. Next up, exercise. Physical activity improves one's mood while increasing energy levels in the body. Managing stress is another weapon against sickness. When we are anxious, the body's disease-fighting defenses are reduced. Keep hydrated. Yes, the body doesn't function properly when it doesn't have enough fluids. You may maintain adequate water levels in your body by consuming water, fruits and vegetables with high water content, as well as soup. If you suffer from any health condition, be on top of your medication and stick to the management plan that's been decided on with your doctor. Another tip, you are what you eat. If you consume too much alcohol, sugary drinks, and processed foods, the body's defenses will lack the right micro and macronutrients to function properly. That's why it's absolutely important that we have a balanced diet. Incorporating items from all the food groups allow the body to glow, grow, and go. There are some foods, however, that are rich in vitamins and minerals which help to power up the body's natural immunity. Noted for its immune-boosting qualities, foods rich in vitamin C help the body produce white blood cells, which ward off or shorten the length of infections. 
Citrus fruits such as oranges, lemons, tangerines, lime and grapefruit are rich in vitamin C. But even richer in the vitamin are cherries and red sweet pepper. Local fruits and vegetables such as Otaiti apple, guava, pineapple, papaya, june plum, sourcep, cauliflower, cabbage and Irish potato are also rich in vitamin C. As an antioxidant, vitamin E helps to prevent cell damage and regulate the function of one's immune system. Pear, peanut, olive oil and almonds are among the foods with high vitamin E content. Foods with anti-inflammatory properties help treat respiratory illnesses, so it's best to add cinnamon, tomato, ginger, turmeric, flaxseed, strawberry and garlic to your diet. Vitamin A is a key ingredient in the body's infection-fighting arsenal as it helps with vision, repair, growth and reproduction. In addition to spinach and kale, foods such as carrots, mangoes, pumpkin, sweet potato and cantaloupe are rich in vitamin A. Another immunoboosting vitamin can be found in milk, egg, cheese, tofu, yogurt and fortified cereals. Vitamin D. The vitamin is also present in fish such as tin mackerel, tuna, sardine and salmon. B vitamins are a critical part of the body's red blood cell production. They help to convert food into energy while maintaining healthy body tissues. Banana, sunflower seeds, watermelon, chicken, turkey, goat meat, liver and red peas are rich in vitamin B. Zinc allows our body's immune cells to function properly while reducing inflammation. Foods rich in zinc include shellfish such as crab, lobster and mussels. Zinc is also present in peas and beans, nuts, seeds, as well as dark meat including beef and pork. Practicing proper personal hygiene is also an important part of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. That includes regular hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer if water and soap is not available. Sneeze or cough into your elbow or cover with tissue that should be discarded in a bin. Avoid touching your mouth, eyes or nose. And be sure to practice social distancing. You are your first line of defense against COVID-19. For your health's sake, start practicing good healthy habits today. It's absolutely critical that we receive the vaccines. You will see hospitalizations and indeed deaths likely come down. And so there is a lot of value to be gained by getting as many vulnerables on board as possible. So tell your mothers, tell your aunts, listen out for yourselves if you're over 60 and take the vax because the vax is what will help you to guard against the COVID virus and indeed help your relatives, your friends, those who you come in contact with for the same benefit. That's all the time we have here on this station. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show highlighting Jamaica 59. Keep the lines of communication open. Email us, jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Join us on all the major social media platforms. Visit our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Catch up with us while on the go by downloading our mobile app. We are here for you on behalf of the entire team here at the GIS. I'm Adrian Atkins and thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.